to Julius. Puts up a three. Yes! Yes! And a goal! Aircap Blitz, glad to be with you all in another week as we make our way through June 2024 here on the Believe Network. We're presented by Bet Online. The game starts here. Bet Online is your number one source for the NBA Finals and Stanley Cup Finals this season. Every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads while the games are being played with both of those series looking at 2 0 series leads for the favorites in those outfits. When the game's over, head on over to our online casino and get in on a game of blackjack or poker or online with one of our over 150 <laughs> slots games. Head to the website today to get in on the action and use promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on that first deposit bet online. The game starts here. And the commitments starting to flow in and force. I talked about it last week, Neil. We kind of, I mean, we kind of put, pitched that perfectly we we, we st- stood that thing up perfectly last week when i said we're waiting on the four stars to come in we're waiting on the the flood of june commitments to start flowing and boy did they flow over the weekend with another official visit stretch for the bearcats football team we'll discuss that three commitments over the weekend plus where they stand nationally among the class rankings we'll get to that following our second break of the show and we'll touch on Jake Th- Thielen heading to Covgat as the head coach of I think it's the Generals or the Colonels or something like that one of the, it's some kind of military yep. mascot Colonels there you go Neil's Neil's got it right there Covgat Colonels he is going to be the head coach there and another bench spot opens for Wes Miller to find a candidate for after replacing Josh Leffler with Tim Buckley earlier this off season we'll get to that and more All those great topics coming up on this episode of Bearcat Blitz after these messages. Bringing in Neil Meyer now of the front office news and BearcatsTalk.com. You can catch my work there as well, BearcatsTalk.com. You can catch this podcast wherever you get your podcast, whether that be Spotify, Google, Apple, any medium that you get podcasts from, you should be able to find us there as well as on YouTube talking cats with Russ Heltman, subscribe rate and review at all of those places. So Neil, we had three commitments this weekend, including a four star talent. We'll lead with him as Cincinnati puts a new top ranked player on the, on the board here with Mikel Skinner, 90 overall ranking from 24 seven sports. He's a four star talent committed over the weekend is a three-star composite talent. So technically not a composite four-star in the fold just yet, but a four-star that is ranked highly on the most respected recruiting site, I would say, out there being 24-7 sports. They get him. They also get linebacker CJ Crete to commit over the weekend, linebacker wide receiver, depending on uh, on what kind of role they see for him, and whether that be offensively or defensively. And then Paul Nelson commits as well, Neil. Nelson, a three-star local local recruit, Princeton product, 6'2", 205, and a consensus three-star talent hovering in the low, kind of close to the 1,000-level ranking. So a guy that is another hometown hero option that people want to see. They want to see these guys stick around in Cincinnati, and he is sticking around, that's for sure. Overall, you get a commitment from C.J. Crete, you get a commitment from Paul Nelson, and you get a commitment from Mikel Skinner, the premier receiver so far in the fold, and he joins Kamari Smith as the two receivers in the 2025 class so far. Your overall thoughts on a weekend of OVs and committees from the Bearcats? Yeah, Russ, uh, let's talk about it. I mean, Mikel Skinner, the biggest uh Biggest name out of the group that committed over the weekend, but a four-star talent, a wide receiver and defensive back. Uh, I actually kind of had the opportunity to sit down with him and discuss his uh, decision to commit to Cincinnati, where he said it felt like home because of the family environment. He said when he was on campus for his official visit last week and throughout this past year, most of the 2025 recruits were around, especially here this past weekend for official visits. And he felt like he had a great relationship with most of those guys who had already committed to the university. So that is one huge standout right there. But 
he really said the decision for him to come to Cincinnati was they recruited him early and they believed in his heavy at believed heavily in his athletic abilities. And the lead recruiter, Josh Depp, uh, Cincinnati tight ends coach was the lead recruiter and he's a South Carolina native where Mikhail Skinner is from as well. So coach Depp did a great job at landing the four-star talent where Skinner told uh, myself at Bearcats talk, the front office news where he said, they believe in me. I can make a change in what they are building right now. And that meant a lot for me personally, seeing that I'll be a part of something new and in the making is great for me personally, especially with their new facilities in the making. I'm really excited to get to work. And he said, Coach Sepp has done a great job in recruiting me. He not only believes in me as a player, but has been a key influence in my decision to commit to the University of Cincinnati. But so Neil, but, is that going to make him a tight end then coming in? Are they recruiting him as a tight end with him? No, they're recruiting him as a wide receiver, if I remember right. Okay. Well, there you go. If I, if I recall, they they were recruiting him as a wide receiver. And I mean, you look at the tight ends that they have and brought he's in. Checking in at his size and weight, he's looking at about 6'3, 205 pounds. So would have to yeah. put on a little bit of weight to be able to mm. play the tight end spot. Yeah. And then you throw back to the defensive side of the ball, Paul Nelson, a guy that not many people know about, but he is coached by Cincinnati Hall of Famer Antoine Peak up at Princeton right. High School. So overall, the connection for Cincinnati runs deep there at Princeton High School. And the opportunity to come be a hometown here, Russ, I know that Scott Satterfield and this staff have mentioned the emphasis on recruiting here in the tri-state area. And I mean, you land a guy like Paul Nelson, despite being ranked what some people may view as one of the lowest rankings, close to around the 1,000th in his class. But Russ, people got to remember, this is a kid who just won Ohio's, the state of Ohio's defensive player of the year through his junior season. And three-star linebacker, a big, big frame, and six foot three, 210 pound linebacker. Great size, great speed, great athleticism, great twitch. Overall, I think I think the future is very bright for Paul Nelson, where he could come in here and he could be the next hometown hero, hero especially after being coached by one of the greatest UC football players of all time in Antoine Peake. So, and yeah, he go- joins um Eric Gale, both defensive mm-hmm. players and the two hometown heroes so far to commit to Cincinnati. Yep. Gale, of course, from Withrow, just down the street on Madison Road from Clifton. Yeah, and then you throw it over to CJ Kreit, another big, long defensive back linebacker. You're looking at the kind of caliber of players that they are targeting there in the defensive back uh, room, Russ. We've seen it over the last, now the second cycle for Scott Satterfield and the staff. Long, athletic, fast, twitchy guys is what they are targeting there in the defensive back. And CJ Kreit, a six foot, I believe six foot three, 205. Six, six one, 195 is what he's listed yep. on two, four, six four, one. Four. Still has the opportunity to grow. But overall, I thought I thought CJ Kreit was one of the bigger ads right under Mikhail Skinner, Russ. And I think CJ Kreit would be one of those guys who could come in and shock a lot of people in this 2025 class. If you truly ask me, I would say, C.J. Kreit could be a guy to keep a name on in this 2025 commitment. Yeah, Kreit, the fourth-ranked recruit right now behind Mikkel Skinner, Zion Johnson, and Patrick Williams on 24-7 sports rundown of the Cincinnati class right now. 87 overall and 540th nationally, with Skinner sitting at 657th nationally composite, but he is a four-star, 14th-ranked tight end recruit, third-best Recruit overall from South Carolina on 24-7 Sports' own rankings. Compositely, 657th nationally is Mikkel Skinner. And overall, just kind of looking at him at on three and other sites, get a get a good gauge at what he is looking like from the other major recruiting outfits. Industry ranking from on three, three-star composite ranking, 714th nationally. On three has him ranked 24th among tight ends, eighth in the state of South Carolina, 24-7 Sports, the highest on Mikel Skinner so far, 14th at his position there, third in South Carolina, and one of three recruiting sites to rank him a four-star. Rivals has him at three, and on three has him at 89. Just a smidge below 90 overall ranking from 24-7 Sports. And Neil, overall, just a strong weekend for Cincinnati, you would say. It's a strong weekend for the program, a strong kind of endorsement from three guys, especially the hometown hero, to get that commitment at that. And Skinner, one of those guys, Neil, where the the staff, they've preached tape over stars, getting 
access to guys early, being able to be that first power conference offer for these guys that are kind of hovering in the low three star, high or low four star, high three star range, I think is an awesome, awesome niche to try to get to for this recruiting staff to try to just build a base of talent out of because you're not having to miss out and worry about wasting time on super highly ranked guys but you know that there's a baseline of talent and a strong base to work with with them coming off of their high school careers to be able to think, hey, they could get to a level to where they could compete for a, a eventual starting spot and maybe be competitive all Big 12 talents potentially down the line. It's seemingly le- it's seeming like this recruiting staff, Neil, is definitely trying to identify early onset talents that might necessarily pop late and be high four-star, five-star guys, but will be hovering in that low four-star, high three-star range and will remember that Cincinnati was the most prominent and the earliest power conference team to offer them in their timeline. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a huge testament in, to what guys like Cass, uh, Cass is doing there in the recruiting department or Carter or Zach Grant, the GM, Jack Griffith. That's a huge testament in what they're doing there in that recruiting department. But Russ, as you mentioned, they're looking at tape. They're not really focusing too much on stars. You can develop the talent. But right, because they, they, they invited Skinner for official visit before he was even ranked. Yeah, far before. Mm-hmm. and Skinner was on campus quite a few times before his official visit. I know he came up for a game day visit last year. So, overall, they're, they're identifying this talent within the high school ranks at a very early stage because, Russ, you and I have seen it firsthand whether it's some of the offensive line tackles or prospects that are out there or some of these defensive backs, they see Cincinnati. You have seen very frequently as Cincinnati one of the earliest offers in some of these kids' uh, recruiting processes. And as you mentioned, that one, some of that first Power 5 offers, it holds a lot more weight than people think. So it's very interesting to see, to say the least. Three commitments, and it boosts the class, at least on 24-7 sports radar into the top 30 nationally we'll get to that plus jake thielen heading to covcath and what that means for cincinnati bearcats basketball and west miller's bench coming up on bearcat blitz Russ Heltman, Neil Meyer of BearcatsTalk.com coming at you on Bearcat Blitz presented by the Believe Network. And we're also presented by Pat Online as well. The game starts here. And looking at this Cincinnati commitment list, 12 hard commits as of right now after Mikkel Skinner, CJ Kreit, and who am I forgetting? Paul Nelson, of course. Paul Nelson, all three of those guys committed over the weekend. The heaviest string of commitments so far for Cincinnati. And I wouldn't be surprised if we get – uh, a stretch of three straight commitments over a three or four day stretch at some point again over the next month with how popular this time is for high school recruits to commit in the sport of football. Mikkel Skinner leads the group, Neil, that is ranked 27th overall among team classes nationally. When we look at the Big 12 in general, you have not a lot of teams higher than Cincinnati. You have Arizona State, TCU, uh, Texas Tech, and Cincinnati at four right now in terms of the overall class rankings in the Big 12 on 24-7 sports. Now it's early. They do have a lot of recruits. They have 12 commitments so far. That is more than you are going to see from most teams. I mean, out of the top out of the top 27, Wake Forest, Duke, Minnesota, Stanford. I mean, some of these teams are up to 15 recruits, 19 recruits so far. So that's actually a good kind of basis point for Bearcats fans to think, all right, we're not even at that many recruits and we're still in the top 27. They have a strong, strong average ranking, Neil, from their commits. And I just think it's been a, especially after this weekend, I was a little just, you couldn't take cast any judgment on the class going into the weekend with without those three guys committed. But now that they have these commits locked in, and sure, maybe one or two guys you would have guessed is going to decommit down the line. That's just what ends up happening out of these groups. But 17 to 20 high school commits, I would guess, is what they're going to end up having. And with that amount of commits, with the strategy you and I just talked about, that high three-star, low four-star targeting, you're going to have a strong baseline of lower-level 
talent, a strong floor of talent that you can rely on from this class. And it could be the class that builds the foundation for an eventual competing for that Big 12 title in the next couple of years or so. It's a strong start for UC. We'll see if they can keep it rolling. And we'll see if they can start to really hammer the trenches here. Only two trench prospects brought in so far in this class, and Samuel Page and Benny Patterson so far. You'd like to see those guys start to flow in a little bit more from the trenches. We'll see that probably happen in the next few weeks, next few months. But, Neil, a good start for Cincinnati when we look at them at 27th overall on 24-7 sports and on three. Not yet, I don't think, acknowledging one of the commits because they still have them at 11 hard commits and 52nd nationally. So that would, I imagine, get up closer to the 30 range when they add that third and last commit from this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. And as you mentioned, Russ, I mean, there's still another weekend of official visits ahead of them. Obviously, we've seen a couple posts going out there. There's been a couple guys who have, were on campus over the weekend. I would definitely expect a couple more commitments. As you mentioned, we're sitting at 12. I think they're definitely going to try and target that 17 to maybe 21, 22 range of high school recruits for us. Obviously, everybody knows the transfer portal is still a thing and will continue to be a thing, but really developing the high school guys as well. And I think now that this is a first full cycle under Scott Satterfield and the staff, they're really getting a hammer on the head of guys and talent that they are trying to target. But as you mentioned, Russ, there's only one guy on the defensive side of the ball and Benny Patterson. And then you have Samuel Page up there in the offensive line as well. But overall, there's still a lot of great talent there that was on campus this past weekend and is still set to be on campus this weekend for official visits. So I definitely think they probably will add more to both sides of the ball there, but it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. And just one quarterback in the fold as of right now, three-star Zebulon Kenzie. Kenzie is the 938th ranked player nationally, 57th ranked quarterback. Interesting to see if they bring in any more competition for him, how they handle that position, or if they just feel like they're set. They feel like they found the diamond in the rough, and Kenzie are ready to roll with him as their 2025 class quarterback. Neil, we have a new coach coming to Cincinnati's basketball bench for uh, the second time this offseason as Jake Thielen. Congrats to him. He was uh, he was always cool to talk to on, mm. uh, on, the, on the beat over the last couple of years. He's been with Wes Miller since – uh, Miller came over from UNC Greensboro, and he now is going from the assistant coaching spot to a head coaching job at Covington Catholic after graduating there. Neil, it's a pretty cool story for Jake Deal and graduated there in 2011, obviously went on to play at, I believe, Bellarmine, and he got a great send-off message from his old coach, Wes Miller, who I'm sure will uh, will we'll be seen on the in the in the Cubcat gym once or twice this coming season to uh to to support his old buddy Jake. But really cool for Jake, happy for him and just makes the the summer of June a little bit busier for Wes Miller as he tries to find a replacement for that spot. A spot Neil that was kind of it was it was assistant coach and development laden, right? It was a development director of player development. Exactly. Director of player development. Thank you for the title. And given that this is a huge hiring that we're going to go through. And this is a tough spot to replace given how well Jake Thielen has developed talent on this roster mm -hmm. over the past few years. Yeah. And first off, congratulations to Jake. Obviously it's always cool returning to your alma mater, especially when it's so close here to Cincinnati right across the river. And for anyone who doesn't know, Covcath is a prolific powerhouse just about at football, basketball, anything in the Kentucky Region 9 area. So overall, big props to Jake for getting the opportunity to go home. It's kind of one of those things where you get the opportunity to go back to your alma mater and you really have to think about it. So overall, but Jake has had success at the college level, Russ. And I mean, let's talk about his coaching realm because right out of college, who gave him his first opportunity? A guy in Tom Crean at Georgia. So then Tom, he was on Tom Crean's staff at Georgia. And then follows Wes Miller here to Cincinnati. So overall, the coaching realm, the background, Jake Thielen did a fantastic job. And as you mentioned, Russ was always one of the nicest people, most down-to-earth people to talk to while on the beat as well. Always enjoyed our conversations. But he's going to do big things at Cubcath. And I'm sure, as you mentioned, Wes Miller and this staff will probably all be in the gym maybe one or two times this season to 
kind of watched Jake do his thing as the next head coach over there at CovCath. But overall, Russ, it, it's a significant hiring. It really is because Jake did a fantastic job in development over the last few seasons. I mean, look at guys like Dan Skillings, Day Day Thomas, Jizzle James. Uh, the list can go on and on over the last few years since he came to Cincinnati. But overall, we're looking at another another big hire here as summer workouts have officially started, Russ. So things aren't going to slow down now for Wes Miller, especially while he's looking for another bench assistant coach in the process. Fun, fun stretch here, even though there's no games going on for a few months in either of these sports. Always fun breaking it down with my guy, Neil. Wish all the luck to Jake Thielen. And maybe we'll, uh, I mean, I, I would expect by this time next week, we'd probably have a develop director of player development brought in because these are valuable summer workouts, man. You don't want to don't want to let these go by the wayside, especially when there's so much emphasis on development at this point in the calendar. We'll see how that story shapes out over the next few days. For Neil Meyer, I'm Russ Heltman. This has been Aircap Blitz on the Believe Network, presented by Bet Online. <laughs> Seconds left, shot clock off, four point game. DeJulius puts up a three. Yeah!